Thanks for joining us here at Christian Outreach Church. Our heart is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus. If you have any questions about why we do what we do here, you can learn more about us by simply heading to our website, coct.org.au. We pray that you're inspired and blessed in all the best ways through the word God has for you today. Incredible. Incredible country to live in. Incredible how we are blessed to live in this nation. I look at I love the words of that song, Great Southland of the Holy Spirit. Because it speaks positive, it speaks life into this nation. I think we have to be people as Christians to take hold of the promises and prophesy over our land. The Bible says that those that will pray over a nation, those that will humble themselves and pray over our nation, and those words of that song declare over our nation life, declare over our nation abundance, declare over our nation revival, declare over our nation a harvest of people. That's our heart. I love the way Australia Day has traction. I love, actually, I don't mind the tension. You know the tension we have today? There's a tension in the nation of, of you, you see the, the press and, and the, the, the radical lefties who were politically correct and want to change everything. Sorry if you're a lefty. Um, but the reality is, I love this, this, this groundswell of patriotism and pride in our nation. I love that where we were on the weekend and Saturday and Friday and Saturday, there was flags and people with Australia all over. Whereas it wasn't that long ago, Australia Day was just a public holiday. Uh, Now it's something of our pride. There's something of pride rising up in our nation. And I think that's a godly thing. I think it's a healthy thing to declare over our nation. I don't think it just should be on Australia Day. I think it should be every day that we declare over our nation. I love the way God's wired us and people will talk about our immigration policy and, and different things. They go, oh, why are we doing that? Why do we, why do we sow into other lands? Why do we do that? Because that's how God's wired us. And as Christians, we should celebrate that. We should celebrate all the cultures coming to Australia because there's a promise for us that as people come, they'll go and change the nations. So they come to Australia and they'll take the gospel back. That's where the promise we have. We have this incredible promise, but it's the gospel is good news in our nation. It's good news. I think there's also the wrestle of the attitude, and I think the attitude of the, the entitlement, and one of the risks, I think, particularly as Australians, is we become so entitled with what we have. There's this entitlement. I love watching people come to Australia from other lands and they come and they see the opportunity. They don't just take the entitlement, they actually say, look at the opportunity. And and I watched and watched for years as people have taken hold of that opportunity and made successful businesses, made a successful life and have sown back into our nation. So important. If you look at the story of Abraham, God called Abraham and he said in in Genesis, he said, why don't you go, Abraham, to a land that I've called you? And he put him in the gate of all the nations. He put him in the trade center of the world. to bring. And the reason God said was that they will see the Lord is good. When people come to Australia, they need to see that the Lord is good. They need to see this good news. Not an entitlement attitude. I, I, when I grew up, I grew up in uh, Sydney and, and there was a, a, a friend of mine, his name was Michael Lowe. And Michael went on, uh, he was at school, with, at school with me and he was a friend and he was Chinese. And, and he, he, the beauty of Michael is he didn't just, he was an Aussie. So when he'd speak to you, especially in those days, there wasn't as many immigrants. Uh, and when he spoke, you thought, oh, because he was an Aussie, a just real Aussie accent. Uh, and, and, but he went on to be a pharmacist and, and just incredible man. But his mum and dad, when they came to a na- the nation, they bought a fish and chip shop. And they worked really hard in the fish and chip shop and, and made an incredible go. And then you saw this go, go on generation and generation as these people sew in. And, and that's one of the fantastic things God has done about our nation. I think our challenge is, is we can become entitled. Oh, the government should do more. The government should do that. No, the government should govern. We should work. We should sow. 
we should sow in. Uh, and I think that's part of the challenge we live in in the nation. We take without giving instead of give and then live from the prosperity of what we do. We live in a land of promise. And, and you know, the last 26 years, we haven't seen a recession in Australia. Incredible. It's one of the, the wonders of our nation. We've lived through the Asian crisis, and I don't know, some of you wouldn't remember the Asian crisis. We lived through it when the Asia, all the Asian nations went through this crisis and we sailed through. Everyone said, oh, look, the Asian crisis is going to get it. It didn't. We lived through the IT bubble. It was the IT bubble, the crash, when everyone was throwing money into IT firms, and we lived through that, we sailed through that. The Great Recession in, uh, in 2008, they call it the Great Recession. We didn't have one. Incredible, isn't it? It's an incredible time because it's a great south land of the Holy Spirit. And God's blessed our nation. And we are blessed. It's good news. I think as we celebrate Australia this weekend and we celebrate Australia Day, it's not on next weekend that was in church news, that's actually this weekend. So if you're visiting today, uh, it's actually this weekend. And after the service, there's uh, food out the back and um, I think we're doing a, a real Australian theme this year, which is great, and uh, it, it's fantastic. The kids are down there having a fantastic Australia Day. But one of our challenges is the, the tall poppy syndrome. It's a nation. And we need to address it as Christians. We need to be people that, that address this deal and say we want to celebrate people. We want to be marked as people that celebrate. And the, one of the reasons I think the tall poppy syndrome exists is because we don't love ourselves. And part of the move that I'm seeing happen in the world, in Australia rather, is this Australian pride, which is healthy because of all of a sudden we're starting to love ourselves. And there is a reaction to that. There's a reaction that says, oh, how do you celebrate like that? That's not a celebration. It is because we're starting to actually love ourselves. You see, the Bible puts it this way, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And our challenge has been as Australians is do we love ourselves? We've, we tend to look down on ourselves. We tend to go, oh, well, you know, we're just this little nation of 26 million people or whatever we've got right now. We're just such the size of a, you know, our nation's the size of a city. But some of the greatest inventions in the world has come out of this nation. Some of the greatest things have come out of this nation because God's blessed us. And I think as Australians this morning, as, as Christians Australians, as the church, we need to love ourselves. And sometimes we hear in Australia, oh, you just love yourself. Not that type of love. It's the love where we can actually look at ourselves and go, yeah, actually, God loves us. We're, we're in his kingdom and we honour God by showing that love. And the only way we can honour God really is to love others. But as we love ourselves, we'll love others as we love ourselves. And I think it's our challenge. I think we've got to be challenged to it. That we need to be grateful for our nation. Let's overcome this tall poppy syndrome. As Romans says, and outdo one another with honour. We'll make it a competition. In your small groups, make it a competition. How can we outdo one another with honour? Not pull people down, but outdo them. Look at other people that have got success. Look at Hillsong. Celebrate it. What a fantastic thing. that There's this New Zealand to come to Australia and grow in this incredible church that's gone to the world. Celebrate that. Look at people that are successful around you and go, isn't that fantastic what they're doing? But I think that's got to be our demonstration of our heart as Christians as we celebrate this nation today. One of the things we love to do every Australia Day is we love to honour people uh, who are in this place. We have an amazing team called the Dream Team. We coined that phrase because we couldn't think of a better word for it. And we debated all the different words of how you could actually frame that. But the Dream Team we have in this place is incredible and, and we want to honour some people in the Dream Team today. Uh, and we're going to honour some more tonight as well. But I want to say thank you before we honour individuals to everyone who serves in this place. Because I think you're all exceptional. 
Uh, and it's just an amazing place to be, a place where we don't... And one of the thing, great things God has done, and I think it's amazing, is we, we have people that can serve not out of great need where the church is saying, oh, will you do this and plead, but actually serve out of being grateful and serve out of using the gifts and the passions and who we are, not just, you know, oh, we need someone for children's church. And we do need more people for children's church because there's a hundred odd kids down there, which is awesome. Um, but we do need more kids and we do need more people, but we want people to serve in their giftings. That's our passion in our heart, that people serve in their passion and their gifting and, and can make a difference, not only in this world, but in their world. That we're called as a church and as leaders to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Not as a cop-out, but actually to equip people every day. And the way we get to do that is we get to equip them in church and the skills and things they learn, they take out into the world, into the workplace into their homes, and I think that's a powerful deal. I love the fact that we see people in our uh, school here who are equipped in such a unique way. that they, they have the confidence that's built in them because of the Christian environment. They get this confidence, and you see them up and speaking, and you think, wow, I look at our youth, at our, youth our teenagers, on Friday night where they have the Friday night service, and, and they're, they're heading towards 200 on a Friday night. That's phenomenal, isn't it? Teenagers. That's outstanding. Outstanding. As Doug's handed that over to Ben and, and watching Ben Thompson grow and leadership in that. Amazing. But you see, when they're there, I love the fact that we see young people. There's a year eight girl started serving. And it's a couple of years ago now, so she's probably in year 10 or 11 now. And she was running a group of 20 people, year eight, leading 20 people to do the setup. Now, if you don't see it on Friday night, this place is totally radically different. So the whole place gets turned around, the chairs change, all the chairs, a lot of the chairs go out, and, and then there's a whole area set up outside. Drive past at seven, you know, 6.30, 7 o'clock and see this amazing thing, these young people. But it's led by young people. Because age isn't the barrier. It's, it's empowerment has been our barrier and we empower these people. I love that. that imagine a year eight girl who started to, to lead at what, 13 or 14 and she's led through her time at high school and then usually spends some time after that leading in, in, in other areas in capacity. When they step into the world, they've already got this body of leadership that most people never have. It's incredible what we do. So it's, it's just amazing. But we want to honour some people right now. Um, Isaac Greenfield. Yeah. Come on, Isaac. Come out the front. Yeah. Come on, mate. You can go quicker than that, Isaac. Come on, run. <laughs> hey, you can't run. This young man here is an amazing servant. He has just done a fantastic job. He looks after all the lights now and, and does a great job. And we see him here on, when he's on holidays, in serving when he's on holidays. We see him here at night. Just incredible as he sows in and learns and grows. And Isaac, we just want to honour you, love you, thank you for all you do, all you do. You. Have a present. Well done. Mark Olson. Where's Mark? Mark's on sound. Come on, Mark, run up the front. You can run too, Mark. We know. I see you train every morning. You know, after the service today, this man who sets on sound and works on sound, he, he comes in when Jordan's not able to do sound and helps him weddings and all different types of things, but he'll turn this whole place around and get ready for night. He's just an incredible servant. So we love you, mate. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. We appreciate that. Australians. Woo. Danny Humber. Where's Danny? Danny's been here since Adam played fullback. <laughs> I just love this man's servant heart. He works on the music team. 
He works down the college as well. But, you know, when we printed, this is an example. When, he printed, when we printed the prayer booklets, and if you need a good, good resource, those prayer booklets are an outstanding resource. But we had to produce those, and, and we sent the file down and had too many pages to it because we can print a certain number. And there's Danny, we sit down, we've, Arna's done a whole pile of work to make it and shrink it and get it right, and, and Danny's there printing it. But, you know, to run them, you could only print s- small batches. So here he was, Friday night after work, printing booklets. Come in on Saturday then to print booklets. Went home when they'd run that one. He come in again and printed. Danny, you've just got access to an incredible servant heart. We love you. Appreciate you. Thanks so much. Robin Webb. Where's Robin? Here she is. Hey, Robin. This amazing lady runs our prayer ministry. You know, we've got a thing in the growth track called Find Freedom, and part of what we do is people that need ministry and need just help through different areas. Robin runs the prayer ministry and, and does that voluntary and just does an amazing job with a team of people and volunteers, an incredible team, uh, to help people as they just work through different things. And, and we've seen so many amazing results through it. But I see this lady in here all week, in and out, and weekends, you come in on a Saturday, and there's Robin's car at the front, and she's ministering to people and with her team. So, Robin, thank you for all you do and all the people you've helped set free with Jesus, and we just love you and honor you. Thank you. Thanks, great. Fabian and Liz. Fabian, what an incredible man. We've got this great import from West Australia and we love him. (laughs) This guy does so much stuff. If there's ever anything needs to be done, this couple do it as you represent Liz today. (laughs) And we just love you, mate. We just appreciate you. Coaches, small groups, gets in and does amazing things around the place. So if, you ever, if we ever need anything done, these guys put their hand up. They're out there serving all the time. We just love you and appreciate you, mate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Steve Short. I love the head shakes. Uh, you know, here's this man. When play needed some play equipment in, and they just went and made them little play equipment, little woodwork. Tim, Steve does this incredible woodwork. Uh, and we see it all around the place. The, the, he makes us things for this place. The Christmas tree last year, you see that beautiful timber Christmas tree? This man built that. But not only that, he comes in every week and serves and does our buddy count and our banking and all of those different things. And we just appreciate you, mate. Every week you're in this place serving. Love you and thank you. Thank you so much. And last but not least, because I just think there's so many people we could honour, I could spend all day up here, is, uh, and I'm going to wander to this one, is Ted and Jenny. We appreciate you, mate. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, Ted. Yeah. Thank you. These guys are amazing. They run the Prime Timers group. I'm not old enough for it yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how every year it changes and I'm just not old enough for it. But these guys do an amazing job. They, they run small groups. They've championed small groups. They've, they've championed every week. You'll see Ted and Jenny over on the door just greeting people and loving people. They serve their heart is to serve this place. You're a great example to our young people as well. So we just honour you both. Thank you so much for what you do. Thanks. Isn't it awesome to honour people? We have 200 people that volunteer in our dream team in this place. And I think you're all amazing. Honestly, I do. Um, Thank you for everyone who does an amazing job, 
who make an incredible difference in this place. Uh, I really do just honour each and every one of our volunteers and, and you do make an incredible difference. I hear stories uh, as people walk through and they, the way they're greeted and loved and people just cared for kids and, and we cross out each area uh, and just watching our level of expertise increase is incredible. We become that mark that people look at and go, wow, we set that example and that's who we should as followers of Christ. One of the things we're doing and, and is this year is we're putting, uh, it's called the Growth Track. You would have seen some advertising for it. And what the Growth Track is, is to help people on their journey to find their meaningful place of service, to, to learn about us is really important. You want to learn about the doctrine of who we are, our doctrines, our foundation, our faith, a bit of history in the first week. And then we move on into uh, finding your gifts and your passions, finding how you worship style, um, we, we uh, do a personality thing as well, just to help people find their place. Because one of the things I've found in the life of church and just in the life of people is people s- sometimes struggle to find who they are. And, uh, and what we want to do is help people find the freedom of who they are. Uh, and then we, we look at how we, can, how we do leadership and then we look to how we can find a meaningful place of service in the church. And not just a place of service, but a meaningful place of service. A place where you can sow your gifts in and, and you see the fruit of your labour. Uh, and one of the things I've found of church is people that sow in and connect connected, they seem to grow in their life in Christ. Uh, and that's my heart. My heart's to see people grow in their relationship with Jesus. And that's what we do. So down the back today, because this starts next week, we've done a trial and we've, we've put a trial through. But down the back today, you'll find an, a, an iPad. There'll be someone there at the info desk to take your name if you want to enrol in that and, and put it on the iPad because we do some food and stuff in there as well and we want, need to know how many booklets we need to print and all those logistic things. But um, you guys can, can sign into that. It's on every, it'll be on every Sunday. So the first Sunday is the first, is uh, know God, know us and know God. And then second Sunday goes on, find freedom and... and, and we just want you to, to know that. So every week now in this church, every week, there's the growth trap. Other than the Sundays where the fifth, where there's five weeks, we drop that week and we start the week after. So the first is first is the first one. It goes through second week, third week, fourth week, and then we start again. So if you want to jump into that, if you could sign into the iPad down the back and um, we can help you on that journey while you're eating your food, which is great. Wonderful. Um, just a, a short message today, but I, I wanted to talk about gratefulness. As Australians, we should, be peop- we should be grateful for the land we live in. Gratefulness is an attitude. It's one of those, those things, you know. I, I find that as I'm grateful, I see life through a different lens. If I feel entitled, I feel I look at life and you go, oh, well, life isn't dishing up what I want. But when I look at life through gratefulness and I look at it and go, well, I'm really grateful for what's going on. I'm really grateful. And, and even when we face the challenges that, and, you know, these things come and hurt us sometimes, we can be grateful for that even though you go, well, in the middle of this test and this trial, the great, if we're grateful, it seems to pass quicker. We seem to say, okay, I'm grateful for what you dealt me, God, because, or what, you know, the devil's come to try and all those things because it builds something in us. But the attitude we have, we view it through a different lens. Philippians 2.14 says this, and I love the way it's put. Live, at, and this is out of the Passion Version, so you may not have it yet. It's about to be released um, in, in different places. But it says, live a cheerful life without complaining or division among yourselves, for then you will be seen as innocent, faultless and pure children of God, even if you live in the midst of a brutal and perverse culture, for you will appear among them as shining lights in the universe, offering them words of eternal life. What a great statement. What a great challenge to us as Christians. Because we can be grumpy. You can find, you ever met those grumpy Christians? (sighs) You ever met the ones that are complaining Christians? Doesn't matter what's going on, there's always something wrong. Uh, the complaining ones. You, you, you meet them and you run into them and you go, well, just have a look at how good life is. And that's why it's one of the reasons I love taking people on short-term mission 
the nations because they sometimes see the other nations and go, oh, flip, I'm glad I live in Australia. Even when you travel to the to nations like America, you go there and the great, you know, the great American and the, the, the whole patriotism and all of those things, which are really good attributes, you go there and then you see the, the homeless people and, and people that can't have work and, and these incredible things that go on over there. You come back to Australia and say, thank you, Jesus, I live in this nation. If we have this gratefulness, this attitude to live a cheerful life, it's much better to be happy. Honestly. To look at life and go, hey, that my cup is half full, not half empty. And doesn't matter what the circumstances is, if we have this attitude of cheerfulness, we, can, we live a much better life. And we also demonstrate that we're different to the world. I love the way it says that we're a shining light to the world. The people look at it and go, you're different. What is it about you? You know, and, and people, you see, they see you deal with issues. They see you deal with people who are who are incredible, incredibly nasty to you. And that happens. If you live long enough, you're going to find sometimes people have bad days. Most of us are like the rest of us. And we can come across. But, and then but we see that we are able to deal with someone who's been grumpy and, and still love them and care for them, not just take them down. And people go, you're just different. And I think we've got to show that the, you know, we have good news and part of the way we do that is gratitude. Having a grateful heart. Grateful, it, gra- gratitude is a sign of faith. Interesting, isn't it? You say, what are the signs of faith? Oh, that you walk on water. Well, I quite haven't done that yet. Tried plenty of times. Always sink. I've walked on ice, which is close to it. But not water. Uh, but it's not that. You know, people say you have faith, but I love Hebrews where it talks through the people of faith. Rahab, a prostitute. You go, how does that work? She helped people, showed love, had protection. You look at those people and people who, who are there and they saw the promise of far off, but they didn't live in their promise, regardless, people of faith. Gratitude is a sign of faith. It's a sacrifice. Gratitude can be a sacrifice. You, you have all things going on in your life and you, if you've got the heart of gratitude, sometimes that's a sacrifice, the sacrifice of faith. But thankfulness brings freedom and an assurance that God has got it. See, that's faith. When you're going through circumstances, when you, when you look at, open all of a sudden one day, you open your bank balance and go, oh dear, hmm. anyone had that? Or all of a sudden you're in business and, and you look at your cash flow and go, I've made all of this profit, why can't I pay my bills? Because the cash flow issue. To come back to God and say, God, I'm grateful. I'm just so grateful for where you've put me and what you do. And out of that gratefulness, out of that thankfulness, God moves. You read the book of Job and you get to the end of the book of Job and there's Job after being through a pretty horrible time, lost all his kids and still ended up with his wife. Um, (laughs) Dug another hole. (laughs) Well, she was whinging. She said, just curse God and die. Well, there wasn't much encouragement there, was there? Like, really? But there he is at the end of his life, and he's been through all these things. And the friends that he had were just winches and motors. They weren't grateful either. They, they were, you know, weren't the encouragers. They were trying to point out all the things he's done wrong. And, you know, you might have people around you like that at times too. But we get to, he got to the end of it, and as he prayed for others, as he was grateful, God gave him twice as much back. Didn't give him two wives. Twice as much back. (laughs) I'm just helping you, Rob. (laughs) Thankfulness brings freedom and assurance that God's got it. Psalm 50 verse 23 says this, but giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honours me. If you keep my path, I'll reveal to you the salvation of God. 
And we think that salvation is redemption, but it's not. We're redeemed as we give our life to Christ. The Bible says very clearly, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. You'll be redeemed. But you see, this is talking about salvation from every circumstance. This is talking about salvation as you go through your life and you face the challenges of sickness and you face that challenge, Janie, that says that sacrifice of thankfulness that God sees as, you, as you've worked through and, and you've had that bad day and there's that sacrifice of thankfulness that comes out that God sees. He says, I'll reveal to you the salvation with God. But giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. We honor God through our thankfulness, through our gratefulness. Grateful, gratefulness takes away entitlement. One of the things I think is a curse to our society is entitlement. I talked a little bit about that, but we're entitlement. Whereas we start to say, hey, I'm just grateful. As you start to look through those eyes and say, I'm just so grateful. I'm grateful for where I live. I'm grateful for the things God does for me. I'm grateful for the parking spots. I'm grateful for my, my job. I'm grateful for the work that we do. We just look at life through a different lens. Otherwise, you look at life and see all the problems of life. You sit there and you look at it and go, I see that problem. Oh, look at that. And you hear it, don't you? You hear it in society. And they see the problems. And is there problems? Yes. Are they insurmountable? No. The problems become your opportunity because you can look at it and all of a sudden there's that creative ideas that overcome. Every great solution in the world came out of a problem. Everyone. The cochlear ear implant came out of a problem of deafness. The cars came out of a problem of transport. Planes came out of a problem to get to the other side of the world. The problems are our opportunity. If we see them as that and grateful for the challenge that comes our way. We see the gap in the market and create the problem, create the solution to the problem. Rather than look at it and go, oh, it's a problem. And it stops us as we're grateful we go through. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says this, always be joyful. Love that. What's a whole verse? Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is the will, God, this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Hey, if you belong to Christ Jesus today, be joyful. Be thankful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. No matter what the world deals you, no matter what the life deals you, the devil, the Bible says in John 10, says comes to rob, kill and destroy. You see, you can get stuck in the kill and destroy. Become your whole focus becomes the kill and destroy. The, the devil's stolen from me. Uh, I'm, I'm being ripped off. I, you know, and you can get stuck in that. You can see that as the problem. But then if you go on in that verse, Jesus comes to bring life and life abundantly. As we shift to the life abundantly, as we shift to the gratefulness, as we start to take hold of that gratefulness and go, I'm going to choose gratefulness rather than the problem. You see, that's where God comes and Jesus comes in and gives you that life abundantly. Be grateful rather than worry. You ever mull over those small things? And all of a sudden they become big things? You look at the challenges that keep you awake at night? Such a little thing. And the little thing becomes an anxious thing. You start to worry. You start to not be able to sleep. You start to get to that challenge. And you just look at it all the time. The Bible puts it this way in Philippians, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Be anxious for nothing, for no thing, be anxious. And everything through prayer and supplication. Friend, prayer and supplication. We've just finished 21 days of fasting and prayer. I had my first coffee this morning. I'm really happy about that. Sorry. I just had to let you know. 
It was a good one too. I got it from the coffee cart. Um, do you know we've got a coffee cart in the foyer? If you don't know, we've got a, a cafe. And do you know what we've done? In the coffee cart, you can buy a small coffee for $2.50. In the cafe now, you can buy a medium coffee for $3. Because we want to be a blessing. We want to be generous. So you can get in there and we, we just want to be, and we've got our, we want to just bring our prices and we've been bringing our prices down. And the only reason is we want to be generous. We want to make it affordable for every person. So there's my ad in the middle of it. Be anxious for nothing with prayer and fasting. This morning after the service, we're going to have uh, six spots down the side where you can be prayed for. Uh, we're going to anoint you with oil if you'd like that. I've asked... Um, and we've given some instructions around not prophesying to our people that are praying. But I've actually said I'd love you to prophesy. Because we've got these people that are gifted in the area of prayer and in the prophetic. I've asked them not to give you long prophetic words. so Because we can get in and start prophesying. But if you, need, if you need prayer, if you're just going through a tough time, if you do feel anxious, if, if you just want to be anointed for 2018 for your business, for your life, for your education... We'd love to pray with you this morning. So while there's going to be food out the back and all those different things, if you want prayer, we'd love you to go to one of those six stations down either side and we've got people that will pray with you and anoint you. They'll anoint you if you're sick. They'll lay hands on you and anoint you for healing. Because we just find it so valuable. At the end of this prayer time, people have been praying and asking for things. But if you're in that place this morning and you just love prayer, either side of the church. One of the great things God does is when we come and ask Jesus into our lives, he takes away the guilt of sin. The condemnation of the devil and also the condemnation we give ourselves. That's what we can be thankful for. We can be thankful that all the sin... The guilt of sin, because it's a sin. We, we sin, but then the guilt of sin gets us. And when you give your life to Christ and as you go on the journey with Jesus in a growing relationship with him, the guilt leaves. That's what we should be grateful for. We're no longer bound by that. There's no condemnation. You know, one of the things I've found is we condemn ourselves. Because the devil comes along, old hairy legs himself, and speaks to us and says, well, we're not worthy. Look at this sin. Look at who I am. And we condemn ourselves. Jesus takes away the guilt and the condemnation of sin. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this great south land of the Holy Spirit that we live in. Father, I thank you for the amazing things we see every week, every year. We're incredibly grateful for your love and your compassion and your mercy every day. And we can pick up your mercies every day. We thank you so much, Lord. 